Happy Easter, everyone. Mm. It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brand. As always, I'm not celebrating alone. I have the ladies with me. Mm. Nima Akasha Zibiri, how are you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is your lace is uh, on point. Beautiful. Really, yeah, really popping. Lovely. Hey, Ayaba. Ayaba sent us a box of yes. um, you know, yes, fabrics please. in December. I mind just came. I couldn't wait. So today is Easter. Yeah. 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 I must say thank you to Figure Stitches for cutting figure. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> um, I want to shout out to my fans and the you know, loved ones, family members who left my phone ringing back to back to the point the phone died. Yeah. And Tosi, I cannot move now. Tosi says you have to move closer to where you work. You know, um, that's the reality of some people every day. You know, going to work and back. Mm. I want to say thank you to all of you for reaching out. I saw all the messages and I could not even start to take comments by one by one to respond. But thank you so much. And I did a video there this morning, it's on my page, on the real situation of things. Right. Because I knew the, the officer, in, in fact, kept lying because he wanted to establish that lie as a state, as a fact. Right. So I had to go there this morning. So what's really the situation now? Out. Are they allowing them to take that diversion? <laughs> the, the, the video will show cars taking the diversion mm -hmm. as of right. Yeah. So what they did was very illegal. And it, at the time they did it, it was a week old notice. Mm. So they knew they just wanted to find a yeah. victim. It was an illegal operation. The and I think if it would happen to you, mm -hmm. you know, like how many other people would it have happened to that did not have a voice to project yeah. it? Yeah. Um, we, we need to, we, there's a lot of challenge happening everywhere. Easter was supposed to be celebrating. Yes, we are celebrating. Mm -hmm. We're grateful to God for life. We're celebrating restoration, we're celebrating re resurrection. But there's so much unfairness around us. Injustice. There's so much injustice. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm good. We hosted I family. I love your lace also. It's really nice. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, that was my last uh, party last year before the <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> and I've been waiting for when I'll get to rock it. And then, oh. you know, I, I'm, I'm one of the last minute planning person. So, I, like this morning, we just picked it out. Picked it. We couldn't find the appropriate gilly. And then Murayo brought the perfect jury to match my... Like, oh. I, when I saw myself in the mirror, I'm like, I said, Mariah, God just told Mariah that this is what up where we we'll wear. So as she brought it, I said, Mariah, you can't wear the neck piece with this, your outfit. I'm sure my mother if it's me. No, 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 she did not give me. I just borrowed it for the show. <laughs> my mother of, is the supplier. Yes, gift of men. Top way, top you know, way but, to get her own now. Yes, yes, Mama Aka sees that you like Ma Mama Aka, I love it. I already mentioned your name this morning, yeah. but we had people over yesterday um, at the house and oh, it was nice. so much fun. Um, yeah, and you like it, you see people now, you like it. Uh, yeah, when you have it. Oh, <laughs> Brian, it's good. Oh, God. Let all of us grow. May God Amen. bless us all, Amen. you know. Amen. It's, it's Amen. good when it is all round, yes. you know. Amen. I'm really grateful. Mariam. How are you doing, Maria? I'm doing I great. I love the days. I love you. Just Thank came you. like nice. this. Ah, you just walked you. into the makeup like, I'm already made up. I'm like, I'm elegantly. <laughs> Thank Looking you. this morning, how are Thank you? I'm fine. Well, since everybody's giving a history about the, this, my outfit is six years old. <gasps> wow. Yes, I bought uh, what NHN Couture at the oh. time. I just had um, Aima and I was really feeling, you know, not so confident. Mm. So it was about four or a week after her birth, it was my stepdaughter's wedding. Mm. So I wore this for the wedding. And when I went to NHN Couture, she's so lovely. I was telling her, oh, I have this wedding. She was like, don't worry, I got you sorted. Aww, <laughs> and she look, told me that this is an exclusive. Really... At the time, she said this is exclusive. It's not out yet. I was waiting till December to bring it out. Aww. But for you, you yeah. can have it. So thank you. I get, like, yeah. I get to wear it. I get to wear it, you know, um, often, once in a while. And yeah. it's still good. So, wow. yeah. That's but nice. then, really, I'm so grateful. We've had, um, the family has had a very, um, mm. you know, we, we had the loss. You know, this sort of yes, so. sad, painful, shocking loss. You know, that seems so unfair, especially when children are left behind. Mm. But we thank God for life and we're praying for the family that she's left behind, that God will be with them and comfort Amen. them. And that her children will grow, you know, and be successful. Mm. And that the hurt mm. that they feel today, that God in some way, you mm. know, would provide some sort of, you know, salve and, and comfort them. Mm. Yeah. But thank we thank God. God for today. And also it was my husband's birthday. Oh, yes, it really was the day of the burial. But, oh, you know, uh, we uh, got to cut a cake at the end of yeah. the day. And That's we thank nice. God for That's life. Nice. More yeah. special. Yeah. Yeah. To be yeah. to God. That's and, nice. Yeah. I, and you, sweetheart. Yeah. I think you look kind of delicious. Thank you. And <laughs> Over the weekend, I had, um, I had two speaking engagements on Friday at the church. Uh, Christ Redemption, not too far from here. Then I had the one in... Um, take over and share it. it was really nice i thank god for the opportunity to speak and i'm more i'm most grateful 
Because God did, you know those kind of miracles God does that? And he's like, he's bone shaking, ground breaking. And you're thinking, how did how? God mm -hmm. do this? Is this possible? When a loved one um, had, had cancer and uh, was said they, that the, the enemy had cancer. <laughs> and the whole family prayed. We just pre we all agreed together. We seriously prayed. We prayed out that cancer. By the time they did the test over again, this was in the U.S. They and they came back. They said they saw it. They kept thinking, when they saw this thing, he's not looking at like cancer anymore. By the time the reports came out, it wasn't cancer. And we just thank God for that miracle that mm. he did for the family. Mm. And we're so grateful to God. God is faithful. Yeah. Thank you. All God. right. So we're still in the season of Easter, celebrating, mm. thanking God for all that's happening. But hmm, Nigerians are still worried about so many other things. You know, this is Nigeria. Yes. Sir. As we are celebrating, eating chicken on one hand, we are also remembering that, hey, it is things well, low, that things are happening. People are there. Even this morning, I'm hearing there's breaking news. Yes. Mm. Breaking news of shooting happening. I think was it was in I'm not sure exactly where it was. In most state, I in think. In most state, it's mm. happening. That's over mm. So it's, 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 it's really, really scary. But you know what? Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, we're going to start with the nation. <clears throat> Presidency Kuka clash over Nigeria, a killing field. <sighs> Gunmen kill policemen, others in Delta and Kaduna. Buhari mourns activist Chukuma. Pope slams arms spending in time of pandemic. Naira stable despite dollar demand pressure. Ex-governor senators own 130 Dubai assets. Mm -hmm. Obasanjo Gumi let special court try bandits. Okay, which story are we taking? Oh, let's just read it. Mm. So, Mayor has the Kuka's um, mm. account, but the Black Bishop Kuka, or Bishop Kuka, yes. as you know, made the yeah. Easter State um, um, Sermon. Mm. Sermon. Easter, Easter Sermon, you know, de decrying the state of killings, banditry, generally. And w when I read this story, it's like taking stock of the facts, yeah. you know. And... Um, as usual, um, Garba Show, the uh, senior special assistant to the president of media, responded saying that you know he his comments were not factual. That you know because as a man of God, he should have been based on facts. That saying that the situation is worse than it was in 2015 was in factual. That this uh, the, this, this government ha is one of the governments that uh, created the um, ministry to respond to people oh, affected gosh. by. You know Boko Haram's um, in, in insurgency, the banditry, and all of that, and that displaced people are well taken care of. This ministry also provides money for them to be able to re to to reinstate them to their old um, comfort mm. areas. That without the, we, we see mentioning all that has happened and not mentioning the efforts that they have done was not um, balanced. It wasn't a balanced uh, view for them, and that they should not use the pulpit to advance. A state of a, a, a war state, rather, you should talk about the, neg uh, the positive things that they have done that is happening. I would like to use this opportunity to respond that when, when state actors respond to non state actors like that, it worries me. Mm. So, if he, uh, Bishop Kuka says what he says, which every Nigerian says on the street every day, every single day, all of us will say, once we hear the, in the papers mm. something has happened up somewhere, we say, ha, What is this government doing about right. it? You know. You, who as a government, should make your stand against such efforts right. very, very open. That's Let people fair. see it. And it's direct. Not, and, you know, do what um, the, the governor of Kaduna talked about yesterday. Give us a continuous, uh, you know, state Consistent, of account yes. of security in, your, in, in the All country. Right. Let, let's take yeah, the Pope's, so, let's yes, Pope's so, yes, so the Pope, of course, at, um, on Sunday, he also gave his own... He did the Mass on Sunday, and it was... Because of the pandemic, it was the second Easter in two years that um, where he would normally be um, holding mass for over 100,000 people, but it was you know scanty because of the pandemic. And he was just his message really was that um, uh, about COVID-19 vaccines that please countries should put all their efforts together to make sure that distribution is done quickly, especially to poor countries. You know, there are countries that do not have the resources, but they are depending on the goodwill of richer countries to do this. And he says that it's really sad that it, we, even though we are going through a pandemic, there's just so many socioeconomic crises going 
on across, you know, across the world. And he's saying, one of the quotes he made that it's scandalous that amounts of money are being put towards fighting wars and fighting armed yeah. banditry in the pandemic. It's really the sad situation of things because on the one hand, you are hmm. thinking, do we put all our monies, countries are thinking, do they put all their monies towards fighting the pandemic, towards vaccine, or like Nigeria, how right. do we share the tiny little resources right. we have Between among all the myriad issues that we have? Oh. All right, I was going to take this story by, um, there was a professor of Kent University, uh, Professor Benga Oduntong. And he put together, he compiled the reports which he provided to the EFCC about a comparison of UAE, UK, and US, and, and, and the UK. Mm -hmm. I think we took the, the part of this report. Mm -hmm. And this report was saying that um, 20, I think it was 34 ex-governors and 71 properties are owned to Nigerians. And um, in, in, in total, more mm -hmm. than 130 choice assets have been bought by looted funds in Dubai mm -hmm. by ex-governors, ministers, and senators. And this was provided in um, reports. It says the financial flows of illegal, illicit financial flows report. And this was this is a really damning report that yeah. um, uh, EFCC boss has it. And hopefully, it's going to use that to help trace and find out where these monies have been um, used in Dubai from illicit funds. Yeah. All right, moving on now to the punch. Nigeria's health in danger. Buhari Pampers terrorists, says Bakari and Kuka. Wanted cultists nabbed for killing policemen, others in Lagos. I wish my husband could read tributes of those he criticized, says um, Odomakin's widow. Arab Beshala unveils plans for passport centers in 774 local government. Amotekun rescues Undo, three Undo travelers as kidnappers flee. Bayelsa set up emergency centers as cholera kills 24. Obasanjo Gumi recommends special courts for bandits after closing closed door meeting. Okay, let's start with the human interest story. This mm -hmm. cult is in Lagos. We talk oh, about okay. cults. I wanted to start with Arekbe. I have okay, go ahead. You have that story. story. So, um, good news now. The Minister for Interior, um, um, Ralph Arekbe Shala, has announced the opening of passport uh, collection centers within the 77, several and 74 oh, local government right. areas within the country, mm -hmm. saying that this will speed up and, um, you know, getting your passports cannot take beyond 72 hours now. And even if it was going to be beyond that, you get a 48 hours notice about it. I would love that, you know, this includes the problem of uh, paper collection and paper and all of that. You say, you know, uh, there's no booklets. Booklets mm. problem within yeah. the existing ones already. And we should also try as much as possible to take out this option of printing our passports abroad. Mm. If we make yes. it here, it's, 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 it's going to at least take care of logistics. That's importing and all those cargo clearing and all of that will be taken care of. So I think it's a welcome uh, okay. news. Yeah, so I have the Bielsa story. Okay, go ahead. So mm -hmm. There's an outbreak of cholera in Bielsa and it has cut across 30 communities. It says there are about 200 cases, 24 people have died already. Anyway, the um, State Commissioner for Health says in collaboration with the World Health Organization, and Delta states they're working on different ways to curb what's happening. They're working on vaccines. The rapid test centers are being decentralized, so people are getting tested, people are getting vaccinated, and you know all the other measures that need to help quell this. And they're also doing the investigations, mm. also to find out cause, effects, and how to stop it. Really mm. sad that in 2021 we're still talking about cholera oh, outbreak. Keeping it within the I'm health sector, you know the doctor. Um, Resident doctors are still on strike, and the minister for labor and Gigi said that they're trying to um, resolve the issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're trying to resolve the issue, and his statement was that the house officers affected are the ones recruited above the quota, and those illegally recruited um, from January outside the portal. Then he also said that they would be discussing with them after the Easter break. Right. My thought was this was a major issue. We don't, we don't need to wait till after. Right. We don't, we don't, there's <laughs> no Nigeria Easter. Lives there's are no okay. Easter. That's what They're supposed to have had this meeting. Because That's Nigeria for you. We will now find out from their leaders which part of the memorandum they have issues with oh, after the break. That's Nigeria for you. The human interest. Could I tell you? I was going to take that call, but we have to run. Yes. The call that Shagwa Godo. Yes, Shagwa Godo has been arrested. This confraternity senior member has been involved in the killings of police officers and a lot yeah. of killings around the Korodu area. Yes. So it's good news. I'm happy that. Mm -hmm. Let's go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to uh, we'll continue with the paper review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
to staying with us, so we're going to move on to the Nigerian Tribune, OBJ. Gumi Mit lists over 20 solutions to insecurity. Snakes, alligators are taking over a Korodu warehouse. Uh, terminal freight forwarders raise alarm. Escalating deaths may worsen social unrest, political tension, says United Nations. The activists we lost in Uduma Kingfala no Akintoe, Olawepo Hashim. Insecurity, Ghani Adam seeks redeployment of Oyo CP. VAT may lead to additional tax liabilities, says PWC survey. Nigeria, instead of emergency, it's survival hanging, says Bakari. And Nigeria has become a massive killing field, says Reverend Kuka. All right, um, really, yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's, uh, it's a it broke my heart. The National Association of Government approved freight forwarders uh, um, raised their alarm that due to overtime cargoes, yeah. as in cargoes that have been waiting overtime to either get exported or you know cleared from the warehouse are uh, sitting there, they become fe uh, feasts for reptiles, snakes, and all of that in at that warehouse, you know, and they pose a risk for continuous use of the warehouse. They are calling on the Nigerian customs to do to speed up, you know, do something to clear it. I would expect that, you know, for certain cargoes that have a uh, shelf life or perishable uh, life, uh, food stock, they should be allowed to go smoothly. We should make exceptions and, you know, should, we should label cargoes the way they are. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't even leave, whether uh, perishable or not, we shouldn't even leave cargoes beyond a certain uh, number of days yeah. within a, a warehouse. Okay. When they knew out, that the extent of our culture of waste was at this peak was when the former minister for agriculture that was directly involved in that exportation of yams mm. that was kept till they got expired that the whole minister being involved mm. and those yams expired yeah. i mean waste. i was going to so wasteful mm. i was going to take the story about the escalating debts may worsen social unrest that um, united nations has warned that elevated public debt is limiting nigeria's capacity to fight um, um issue of political tension and he's saying that this, this um, um, overburdened debt may eventually lead to an escalation of social unrest, political tension, which could turn in turn worsen food insecurity, violence, internal displacement, and migration pressures. And that's a report from the United Nations. So, Sarah has taken the president, sues President Buhari, over 3.8 billion naira um, that was found out during the audit. So, there's a released audit report of the Ministry of Federal Ministry of Health teaching hospitals, medical centers, and NAVDAC that this money was, this 3.8 billion was mismanaged or misappropriated by the Auditor General of the Federation within 2018. And he, their grouse, which is why they're taking the president to court, is why wasn't this, um, why wasn't this investigated? If there was the failure to investigate the alleged missing health funds, bring suspects and perpetrators to justice and recover any missing public fund as exposed Poor, uh, poor Nigerians to poor um, health facilities. So I, I'm happy with, I'm always happy with what Sherap is doing. We need more people like these holding the government accountable, looking through what this audit report, because these audit reports are actually publicly available, mm. but nobody is seeing through to ask, what have you done concerning this amount of money discovered not to be appro appropriated, um, used appropriately? Right. So we're waiting to see how right. that pans out. I was going to tell a story, judicial workers, so the Judiciary Staff hmm. Union of Nigeria are commencing a nationwide strike over the non-implementation of financial autonomy mm. of the judiciary in line with the constitution of, um, of the country and other exact laws. So according to them, they had issued a 21-day ultimatum, which elapsed April 4th. Mm -hmm. And Everybody they're saying that um, after their neck meeting, they're going to be going on strike uh, immediately. And this is not good for us because we already have a backlog yes. of cases in the, From in the, the, in COVID the court. COVID period that they couldn't even yes. treat and then... To that one as okay, well. let's move on. And I'm really, I had to go out to the families of um, Yinka Odumaki and Innocent yeah. Chukuma. Both of them died. Um, these are two comrades mm. who fought and stood against military uh, dictatorship many years ago. And these are people that their voices have never been silent mm. against the hardship Nigerians go through. Our hearts go out to the family. The, 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 he, their death was a shock to many yes. Nigerians. Yes. Um, that was really, really painful. And um, his wife recently said that listen, he, that he would have, she would have loved her husband to see all the outpouring mm -hmm. of eulogies coming from different people who he criticized. So when, when death happens, it, it just opens our eyes that you know what, this, um, this, uh, this is just a very, very brief journey we have on mm. earth. And uh, our hearts go out to his entire family. May their souls rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Moving on now to Daily Sun. Bloody Easter in Delta, Imo, and Kaduna. Set up special court for trial of insurgents, criminals, or Bastogne, just Gumi, others tell federal government. 
Kuka Barake laments state of insecurity. Suspected headsmen kidnapped five in Anambra, two rescued. Mm. COVID-19, India donates 100,000 doses uh, of vaccines to Nigeria. Okay. And Ebony Massacre, if federal government will investigate killings, mm. assures um, of Vice President Oshimbaju. Which story mm. are we taking in um, killings, Daily killings, Sun? Killings, killings everywhere. It mm. was a bloody Easter um, in Katama village in Chikum local government area. There was a report hmm? in Kaduna State. There was a report of killings that took place there. Bandits came in, and there were um, five persons were killed, two were injured. There was also the case of gunmen killing four in Imo State. There, there seemed, let me just report accordingly. Hmm? One of the assailants, Sane Safi, was arrested. For, profile, for profiling and investigation. The victims have been rushed to the hospital. That's in Kaduna. Let me just conclude the Kaduna story. Um, and the, there's a clash between some youths in Atuku village in general local government. So bandits on one side, clash between villages on another side, attacks by gunmen that we can't, they can't even call them bandits. All happened, all happened within this festive period, particularly mm. yesterday. Mm. Where is our police? Where are the military? Former president, Elisha Nova Sonjo, at a time in his house and he discussed the issues of insecurity in the country. The profile, according to, I think, was the Tribune that said they have profiled about 20 solutions. What I saw were about three. So they profiled that, you know, we have created a special court for bandits. They also, you know, said we should rehabilitate those repentant bandits and they talked about a visit. Should we mm. be inviting President Obasanjo to visit certain areas that are called volatile areas within Kaduna State? Mm. Maybe that would douse, you know, the... the I think we'd we'll like to hear Nigerians' views on that. So maybe we make it a hot topic. Yeah. Yes, let's take another story. Let's move on to Vanguard. State of the nation, Nigeria in emergency, drifting apart, irretrievably says Kuka and Bakari. We talked about that. 67 security agents killed in southeast, south-south in three months. Buhari, Fayemi, Agbakuba, others mourn a civil society leader, Innocent Chukuman, dies at 55. We talked about that earlier. We have confidence AstraZeneca saves lives, says our NPHCDA. <laughs> and Ebony Massacre, unacceptable, sad, can't be defended. Um, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement concerned over dumping mounts as trade deficit widens. All right, which story are we yeah, taking? We have, um, Go ahead, Maria. National Primary Health Care Development, okay. federal government says they have great confidence in the effectiveness of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, you know, against um, COVID-19 itself, and that it has 76, just naming, you know, all the benefits, mm -hmm. it has 76 percent, it's 76 percent effective to prevent COVID-19, it is 100 percent um, to prevent severe disease or hospitalization and um, you know just to encourage people to take it and uh, so far nigeria has vaccinated 0.2 percent of our population we're looking to uh, vaccinate about 40 percent in 2021 and another 30 percent in 2022 just so you know we have people are confident about what we are taking there, there's no need for fear is what they're saying this has been clinically tested and it shows its effectiveness please let's take the story of the killings of policemen yes. Yes. Uh, because currently in between 25 police stations were burnt in the new urge against this after the NSAS protest this was after the NSAS protest there's been onslaught on policemen um, Navy men, police, wardens, they've been killed by gunmen. There are cases of, they say 15 were killed in Anambra between December till date. And um, two police, two were killed, eight policemen were killed in An uh, Abia State, two police station raised. Also in another local government, there were 11 in Cross River, nine in Akwa Ibom, 12 in De Delta State, um, seven in Edo State, policemen. Some were even saying gunmen would go into the armor and armory and loot the arm, uh, arm, armory and were seeing it because sh shortly after they've armed themselves, we see more attacks and they are more emboldened because they now have ammunition. 
They are looting the police stations. They are burning their police stations. They are killing policemen. We are Nigerians. And, and I think that at no point should we justify the killing of policemen because we are Ni they are protecting. They have family. They have children. Many of them are, they, they have responsibilities. It is on, under no account should we let them go through more hardship because remember during the NSAS protest, one of the issues was that they were not even well remunerated. They don't even have good compensation. Now, no, more no. hardship is being imposed on them. We are demoralizing our police and no, we no. need them. The Abia State government placed the one million naira bounty on yeah. informants who can help lead to the arrest of the government causing the killing within Abia State. And so governments within the Southeast states are responding differently. Mm. But I love the fact that the Abia State government decided to motivate mm. information to come. So people who have any link at all should help government and let's find arrests. Mm -hmm. When we find arrests, we can punish this, you know, this government, any government prosecuted and, and convicted of any such crime. And that will cause sort of discourage the continuous growth of um, people in this business. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's all we can oh. take. We want to take the garden. Oh, sure, sure. Let's yeah. do final paper, garden. Mm -hmm. That's funny. So fears over surge in casualties as doctors strike into swiftly. Is that what you want yeah. to think? Go ahead. Yeah, so the Guardian just did a report, went to the hospitals to hear what people were saying concerning the um, strike of the resident doctors. And it is sad news all across board. <coughs> and so people are saying um, there's this pregnant woman that lost her baby, even oh. though she had, before she was due, she had paid bills for her test, for her surgery. But because of the strike, she had to be moved to a private hospital. Mm -hmm. And in that time, she lost the baby. Oh, and also oh. the money that has been put. Many people, you know, have one sad story or the other. Lives are being lost. People have been asked to go home. People, um, there are just very few doctors, most of them house officers, who are meant to deal with um, the patients on board. There's also the president of the resident doctors also said they are going nowhere until the government meets. I mean, the strike would not end until government meets their their demands. He specifically said that there's a 17 point. There's a 17 billion naira for their insurance that government said had been paid towards the insurance. He said, but we're here, there's no insurance and there's no money. So where wow. is the money? And All right, we have to wrap up on front page review at this time. We're going to go on a break. When we come back, you see, there's insecurity in the land. People are being kidnapped. Remember the Kaduna family? Mm -hmm. Parents are saying, please, I don't care what you do, just bring back my children. Negotiate with them so that my children can come home. On one hand, we're saying don't negotiate. On the other hand, we're saying... Now, Basanjo and um, Shigumi. Shigumi, I say, maybe it's time for us to have a conversation. Do you agree with them? On the other hand, Pastor Bakare and Reverend Kuka are saying, you are totally clueless on this issue As of insecurity. Mm. And the, the country in itself is, hang, is an emergency. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So how, what's the way forward? What do you think? Which way should we go to solve the problem? Because people are still dying yes. and people are still being kidnapped. What do you think about the reports you've heard today? Let's go on the break. When we come back, we'll hear your views on this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So, a few weeks back, when Shegumi came out and said that, we should negotiate with these bandits. Everybody came for him. Everybody was uh, criticized his utterance, saying that it was very insensitive, it was wrong at the time, and um, it was totally being insensitive to the families and the victims. However, a few weeks on, former um, God president of Nigeria, um, Obasanjo, has almost echoed exactly the same thing, saying maybe it's time for us to have a conversation with these bandits, and they were preferring a few solutions. Um, it's one thing to have an objective conversation, it's another thing to have ill-tempered conversation mm. that is going all, all across town. So we have all the reverends and all the everybody talking, saying this, reiterating what we already know. But who is really giving us solutions to these problems? And that's one of the things I wanted to see if we can highlight what these two gentlemen have said and see if Nigerians find any reason in it. You can call us on 081-270-53687. You can also call us on 091-3907-6948. Uh, you can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your VTVC so we can read your tweets. Let's hear your thoughts on this. And the ladies, we all have um, a few of the points that um, Sheikh Gumi and uh, former President Obasanjo had said. And I'd like us to touch a few points. One, of, one that stuck out for me was saying when, when he said that there has to be a common policy 
across the nation because you can't have one or two states negotiating and molly coddling of the criminals while another one is shooting them and saying no negotiation. So one state cannot be saying, I want to have a conversation, and that state cannot be saying, I'm going to shoot you down. So there has to be that uniform approach to deal with these insurgencies across the board. And that's one, what other so points did you see? Me, the headline is a bit sort of, it, it doesn't capture the essence of the conversation and the breakdown of what they had. And I'm happy that Tribune did a better job of saying they brought up a lot of solutions because it, 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 um, their state, joint statement between um, former President Olu uh, Sojo as well as Shegumi was beyond offering um, amnesty yeah. to, oh, yeah. and that was and that was the first yeah, thing. Sure. The line was like, oh, they they, they are both like he made the, the headlines headline. communicated like they were saying let's offer amnesty, yeah. but that wasn't what, what they were about mm. alone. So, they had a list of point. offers. They will come to talk with. Mm. Okay, so um, the one that the one that stuck uh, struck you. Okay, so the one that really stuck to me is about education being the main key to solving the problem. Right. And he says that in the long run, education is the key, but we must start now. The 14 million children that should be in school and are out of school must be put in school with local authorities, state government, and federal government working together. Just to add to that, it also says it's identified that most of the issues are micro-ethnic conflicts between Fulanese and host communities. And so they, because of that, they understand that many people have to be educa educated we cannot take a holiday, we cannot explain it away, we cannot rationalize it, we cannot have 14 million children, children out of school and then you expect that things will be well. <laughs> and, this is okay, yeah. and this is just now. Mm. These 14 children are still children. They will grow up into adults. What are they doing in between? What do you think is going to happen to them when they grow up and there are no jobs and they do not have a proper education? What would they turn into? Whatever it is that we're suffering right now, it will be times 14 million when this happens. So there's no, I mean, we, for me, I feel that we're definitely in an emergency. Do you know, personally, I'm afraid of waking up every morning because I know there's going to be breaking news about banditry. The sad thing about this list, as well laid out as it is. It is not new. We have yeah, said it yeah. too many times. We know what it is. It's, yes, it's been put together on a page of a newspaper, but this is what people have been saying. And to, I'll be afraid to hear that this finally got to the table where it's supposed to get to, and it's like, oh, yeah. eye-opening for them. Yeah, Instead right. of, oh, you're right, we have actually been working towards it, and this and this is what we have done. education for a while, before we move on to the other factors they, 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 they mentioned. Education is so critical that it, 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 it just to be like a local project where the local government was involved. That was your, that was your core responsibility, especially the basic education. Mm -hmm. Before the UBEC was, was, was created mm -hmm. from the federal government to then support. But really and truly, it's a local government project where young where the, the local government must take full responsibility on that autonomy we're talking about. Well, so with the, that's what I'm saying, that the autonomy well, that I've been taking away from them. The, the, no, no, listen, well, the autonomy that they were supposed to have, they don't have it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because if they did have it, they should be their in charge. Their core responsibility is education yeah, and primary health care. Yes. The core responsibility so, of, um, that, of local government is to distill wait, I'll to you, Nima. Mm -hmm. But you see, to that failed. The local area. That failed. Mm. And that's why they, they, brought, they created UBEC. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, even with the UBEC, and the local government, we still don't have that effective communication uh, education I for, for primary school. So, uh, part of the national policy that you know Gumi and uh, Basin is core part of it. Yes. But let's quickly just clear the issue of local authority primary schools within local governments and the abandonment of local governments. Oh, yes. So they play more politics and they face more of their civil service than they take care of the schools. Mm -hmm. yeah. The one in my local government breaks my heart every day when I see the kids, the way they wander yeah. around. This is, the, this is one local government uh, you yeah. know, a primary school within that community. The least you can do is motivate the teachers mm. and make sure that the facilities within are well, you know, well provided. But local governments would turn their backs and only until elections do we know that we have a, a local government within that area. I, di I, I, di I disagree with the fact of their, the, the issue of their uh, funds and their autonomy mm. because they do get funds. And if they even budget at least 10% or even... 5% of what they get to Sometimes, education within their local governments, the state of their local well, governments. That's a different conversation. Will, will but the point is that, that either point, way, either yes. local governments or federal governments, yes. education, education has failed. Yes. 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 And, and, and it's a major and, problem and, why we have yes. insurgency, how it has been. Yeah. Uh, and, and we should want to another one more point. I, I remember that our, last, our guest last week, um, the Roman, said that when they say education is expensive, try ignorance. The result we are seeing in our environment is that because we have given ignorance so much room that 
basic education would let you know these are the problems. Yes. But there's one, the, the, the first issue that was highlighted was state governments must have adequate means of providing security for their, pupil, their people and the chief executive and chief executive security of their state. They must have this. They must have means within their disposal to ensure security of their states. We've discussed state policing for ever. Security funds. Uncle. The yes, mil. The yes. Have it. The the go, this this. You see this the the president. This our president mm. came with the campaign that we would have state policing. This our president promised us that we would have decentralized police and over one term and now we're in the second term almost halfway through second term and we still don't have a decentralized police knowing that there's so much insecurity in this country you cannot have the governor seeking approval and um, the commissioner of the state seeking approval from the igp before they can deploy the um, uh, police that presence way but is. that is the way it is yeah, and yeah. so before you have response there is a lag and we cannot have that lag because lives are being lost right. in between the bureaucracy yeah. of Absolutely. state policing and federal um, authority. Okay, let's go to a quick break. When we come back, we continue on this hot topic. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view. To staying with us, so we're still discussing the solutions preferred by Chegumi and uh, former president of Nigeria, um, Abbasanjo, on the issue of insecurity. Nima, which one, yes, which uh, one came to you? The, the one on the regional solution, talking about the, uh, the government taking this fight to ECOWAS countries. Mm. Nigeria is a country surrounded largely by other countries, and we saw the results when the president ascended the you know took over leadership. In 2015, one of the first things he did was to, to you know, to enforce that regional, what do they call it, multinational joint tax force. Mm -hmm. And we saw the result immediately on Boko Haram because you can't keep pursuing them to one country's border and turning back. Mm -hmm. So when they did go to those border, we saw what the um, Niger government, uh, their own force did, and it seriously quelled Boko Haram's activities at the time. I don't know why it stopped, but now they're preferring it as a solution, mm, and right. it's one of the solutions that I would love right. to take. There's also the part of, you know, whistleblowing and protecting whistleblowers. Mm. We did that. So it was one solution taken at the time, mm. but they didn't protect them. Mm. And so, mm. in fact, payment for the part, uh, part of uh, economic, uh, you know, fraud and all those crimes yeah, were right. not followed up. So we yeah. saw that reduced as well. Yeah. So all right. follow through whatever you. you mm -hmm. Mayor, which other one did you? Yes. Cut to you? The, so the, the one I think has been the controversial one, where it says, "Win those who are ready to be weaned out of bushes and crime, settle and rehabilitate them, give them skills, empower them, and let them have employment." The hardened criminals must be hard hit with stick. With stick, unlawful carrying of arms should be and very seriously punished. Mm -hmm. So I know that this is what has been very controversial because mm -hmm. I think in the minds of people is how do you determine who is truly repentant? Mm -hmm. Because we have heard of um, collaborations with state governors and bandits, and how um, two weeks or two months or two years after an agreement. They pl the place is attacked, and they are saying, "Oh, these people had told us, they had assured us they were not going to attack us. They were supposed to be repentant um, um, bandits, but they, you know, they have turned around." So, how do you determine that? Right. Do you do? The, so, the question will also be: Do you put them through a process of punishment first, whether they are repentant or not, mm -hmm. and then through the punishment? You will find if they are repentant, but not just to say, yeah, okay, you have caught me, you I'm sorry, so here is a skill, right. here is a okay, job, here is call. something for you to go Let me take this call from the UK. Good morning, are you there? Uh, hello? Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, hi. You... Sir. Hi, yes, I am, I'm calling from, uh, from London. First yes. time calling. You know, Welcome, so. to the Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. That's our guest now. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Jerome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, I would just like to say, yeah, it's really really sad that from what i actually see because i know that we're talking about the bandits and all of this insecurities that we see right now but to be really honest most of all these problems that we're seeing can be applied with a common approach that can solve these things very easily but the reason why we're having this problem is these political leaders are absolutely selfish and evil you know that's the way I actually see it. I really don't see it any other way. Okay. Because
Fine. Thank you very much, Jero. add to what so Mariam is saying, because when we're discussing um, what they raised, which is let's, let's talk to the bandits, let's have a conversation with them. And we've seen what happened with the militancy, where they drop their arms, and when they show that they have arms and they drop it, they now they're enrolled, they're taken into school, given a skill, sent abroad for some of them to acquire more degrees and all of that, getting education. And I would say that we've had more issues from that. I think that we need to deal with the underlying ideology that has sent them out. And there needs to be a sort of um, process that details punishments. You know, because when you go to prison, people that go to prison go through a punitive measure that is supposed to now lead to correctional process. In Unfortunately, it doesn't work. So we shouldn't just say we are just taking their arms and then we we'll offer them something. Mm -hmm. But they must go through a punitive process that will now evolve into a correctional process right. that will bring them back into the society to contribute. Yeah. Um, that's on one end. On the other side, the another issue that I wanted to raise before uh, was on the issue of intelligence that the federal government must be proactive, secure, necessary, and update intelligence to deal with organized crime that have, and, have, and, um, and before you talk about common policy. Now, when it comes to the intelligence gathering process, mm. how accessible are our political, are, are government officials with mm. dealing with this insecurity? We had um, the area on Lokakan for Iba Ghani Adams, who said that he has said over and over again, he knows some of the hideouts of people within the southwest and that he's in talks with other people, but he hasn't gotten a mm -hmm. like direct communication with the um, stakeholders within the state. So similarly, we have other people that are willing to talk, but are unwill that are unwilling because mm -hmm. they don't even have access. Right. I don't know if I'm going to go and talk to and the that's DPO. The she was talking about. Yeah, that I, I can talk to my for. DPO, and yes. my DPO is actually sympathetic towards right. the bandits, and right. then I'm, I'm in trouble. All right, let me take this call from Abuja. Um, Abdullahi, are you there? Hello. Good morning, Abdullahi. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Can you hear me? Very clearly. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to contribute to the topic you are yes, discussing please. now. Yes, please. About the issue of uh, insecurity in Nigeria. Yes, go ahead. Everybody has problems in Nigeria. Everybody. The government, the middle class, and the lower class. Do you understand? Yes, very The clear. middle class and the lower class. Corruption, corruption take over everywhere. Mm. Everybody is corrupt. Everybody wants to make money from the security vote. Oh, yes. So if you are targeting one, if, if a militant or a bank is requested for 100 million, and at the end of the day, 50 million will come back to government officials or politicians, mm. while the people will now share the other money. That's the only way people can make money for themselves. They are now trying to kidnap and advance it to be a way of getting money instead of you uh, sabotaging, um, uh, sabotaging the efforts of the government. The military are overstretched. They are being overstretched, actually. The police have been killed almost every day on daily basis, mm. and nobody, no, no, no recruitment because there is a, there is a personal interest between the police, the inspector general of police, and the, right. and the police. Thank you very much, Abdullahi. I was the, one, one, one of the points that actually caught my attention was when they, they said that all well-meaning Nigerians have to be involved in finding solutions by desisting from blame game. Now, yes. this struck me because we all yes. kind of enter this emotional um, state where we all just go with the euphoria of the moment. Yes, blame them. Yes, it's them. They did this. They did that. Yes, we are all angry. Nigerians are upset. Everybody's upset. Nobody's happy that their family is being kidnapped. Mm. But in your anger, somebody has to be sane enough to find a solution. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to be reasonable mm. enough. If not, we can all be angry for the next 50 years and be blaming, go, out, go abroad, do this, do that, shout here, scream that. But then we that live here, we'll still continue to go to. Nigerians also, citizens must take responsibility yeah. in the way we say things. Yeah. Yes, we are, yeah. we are angry with them. Yes, we blame them. But at some point, we have to come back to the table well, to have a conversation. The thing is, because we don't, you know, I want, my, my meaning of justice is what you know, is fair to me. Mm. And talk about meaning of justice and, you know, we're, because well, of it's that. All, it's all about. So, and we don't realize that to reach a general meaning of justice, we must compromise mm. something. Yeah. So this region will say, no, my people have suffered too much. Yeah. This one has lasted too long. Yes. This one that has lasted too long is saying, if I concede now, 
That means my people will be pushed as far back yeah. as you know I pushed the other person. Yeah. And so we remain where we are, exactly. just having the same conversation. Thank Thank you. There's, yeah, a point, yeah, yeah. there's a point here, and let me read it yes. to Emphasize. Yes, it says we identify the crisis as micro-ethnic conflict between the Fulani and many host communities, mainly in the northwest. We identify the remote causes as educational and economic disparities and the negative use of religion and ethnicity by unscrupulous politicians. Yes. And that is the truth. We, we, we oh, okay, yes. So th that's the truth. A lot of people have pointed at politicians for using the situations we have, using our differences in order to push an agenda to get into political office. I think we have to be wise as Nigerians, look to each other first as one. Let us have a, a, a two different classes, Nigerians and the un unscrupulous politicians that want to divide, divide us. us. And yeah. then when we see them, we identify them, we make sure they do not get in office no. or they don't have a voice. Hmm. We have one tweet. Can we say tweet? Please go ahead. First of all, Iwa Iwa says, government at all levels must tackle the drivers of insecurity such as corruption, poverty, illiteracy, unemployment and bad politics. Security officers implicated in heinous crimes must be fished out and there must be strong punishment for arrested criminals. Right. So just as we punish arrested criminals, those erring officials who have probably provoked what we had that they asked against us must be given punishment that is visible to those who feel that uh, unjust treatment. So it quells whatever agitations people have. We have to run, unfortunately. That's all we can take on this. But I think I would, I would like to leave this with us. Yes, everybody is not happy. If we're going to solve this problem, it's not just it's going to be the politicians. Busy. All of us must take responsibility now in, in our own various quarters. So the, the government must do their part. We, as a people, must do our part. Because at the end of the day, we don't want this country to burn. Mm -hmm. This is all we have. And I always tell people, our listen, compared are, yeah. to me, our I have children are, yeah. I'm raising this place. I don't yeah, like, we have kids. Some of you have your children are in the university abroad. You don't have our anything to lose. Some of you are young. So both, both of us are raising children. This, we have stakes. This is their country. This is it. We don't have anywhere. Some of us don't even have visas. We are here. Yes. So please, as you are speaking, spewing negativity, know that we don't we some of some of them want this country to burn. Well, so so please Nigeria is not a fail let state. us fail find state. a way to fail solve state. this problem so that Nigeria mm -hmm. can be useful to all of us. Yes. That's gonna break when we come back, we move on to other topics. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So Nigeria is integrated more than ever across religious lines and ethnicity. Aside the foregoing, killings, kidnappings, ill governance, corruption, rituals, cultism, all have forfeited all our, uh, the progress we've made in the past years. Now our guest today, Reverend Tola Kasali, will use the essence and lessons of Easter celebration as a way to promote peace Unity, love amongst Nigerians. You can join the conversation on 081-270-53687, 091-390-76948. You can tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your VTVC so we can read your tweets. Welcome, sir. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Sli slip of tongue. You're Mika Sally. Oh, sorry. I do, oh, I do apologize. <laughs> no problem. So, um, so <coughs> sir, I mean... As much as I want us to celebrate and be excited about this year's Easter, yes. but there's so much happening in the land, cultism, kidnapping, killing, insecurity. We see Reverend Kuka mentioned the other day, just on, over the over Sunday, that the country obviously is in a state of emergency. What message can we have of Easter today that can actually help to alleviate this pressure Nigerians are feeling right now? I, I think um, the most important message of Easter is peace. Because again, it has to do with someone giving his own life for humanity mm. on the cross. And the cross, it wasn't like this. It was two outstretched hands pulling people together, mm. the Jews and the Gentiles, mm. the Fulanis and the Yorubas, the Igbos and the mm. Shekiris. Can we come together? Mm. That's what Easter is all about, peace. That's what Jesus epitomized in scriptures. That's what he preached mm. on the scripture. Even on the cross, he mentioned something, he said, Forgive them. Mm. Easter is about forgiveness. Mm. Not, not while he left the cross, while he was on the cross, while he was in pain, he said, forgive them. Those that put me here, let's preach forgiveness, let's preach tolerance, let's preach peace, 
let's preach um, inclusion, let's pull people close, and let's build one nation. Because mm -hmm. again, it's about one body, but bringing many into one, mm -hmm. different people. The adversity should be our strength, mm -hmm. should never, never be a problem. Right. So I think the message for Easter should be peace. So the, the, for me, growing up, the essence of this season is always about the sacrifice. I remember yes. sending my messages to Prof. Yes. And I will write, you know, the essence is sacrifice and thank him for the kind yes. of sacrifice. I have a father that is a deacon. And I would notice that this season now, people find it difficult to sacrifice. We would expect people of Bishop Kuka's standing to preach that sacrifice, letting go yeah. of your pain and, you know, fostering peaceful coexistence. Yes. But when you stand on the pulpit, when people are your, have a massive influence, and you only highlight problems. You know, you put it out there, highlighting this tension in, this, in the country without necessarily telling people, let's go. Uh, How do we continue? Not preferring you know, solutions. Preferring solutions. Yeah, I mean, no, 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 no. The newspapers tend to just take the sad yes, part of the please. stories. Mm -hmm. They always tend to highlight the, ne the yeah. negatives. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They don't take the full sermon. Yeah. I've heard, I've watched... Um, Reverend um, Kuka. Reverend Kuka. Um, uh, Pastor Tude Bakari, yes. and I've watched this full sermon, yes. and I'm surprised yes. at the quotes Not that Jesus. paper takes out of it. Yes. It's only the few minutes he spends on the problem, and they don't highlight the long time he spends on the solution. Yes. So I think that many people getting their news from papers alone might not be the. So anxiety. I said, so, Kuka, mm. not yes. I didn't listen. No, no, no. To yes, but also to be very Shop specific. Kuka's yes, statements in the papers this morning. Very specific to Bishop Kuka. He's a well-respected, well-loved yes. bishop, mm -hmm. and he <laughs> preaches <laughs> love. He 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 preaches love, but he's also a man of, of influence. Yes. And the people that come to that con his congregations are made up of Nigerians who are yes. going through things. Yes. People who are at church have lost families to yes. banditry, to killings, to kidnapping. Mm -hmm. So it is only right that he highlights that in, you know um, in 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 conjunction also with message for peace so in making your point you could say that you know without necessarily putting the uh, a name for him mm -hmm. like he purposely and deliberately and only no, does that i, I, I so disagree is, though okay. as a clergy okay. i could pick some of his sermons and then put it back to him mm -hmm. okay for instance one of the things he said in that sermon is that um Ichabod, meaning the glory has departed the child born to one of the sons of the 98-year-old high priest Eli. He said, the two sons took the ark into unfamiliar territory, the battle. The ark means the presence of God. I agree with that. that that's why we're in the problem today. We, clergy, are taking the presence of God into politics. Mm. We shouldn't be into dabbling into politics. That's why we're in this mess. When preachers would name certain tribes as and evil they and they kill the Fulanis, that's taking the hawk mm. mm. into wrong territories. Exactly. We should keep the hawk where it belongs. Keep our calling within the church. We've done put into politics. We've, we are swimming there. The sharks are there. They are using us all for our personal gains. I think he may not have known that, but he is one of those that also took the hawk to where we shouldn't go to. We can have our own opinions, but we can't have our own facts. You should go out there, share your own thing, and prefer solutions. Mm -hmm. Let's build one nation. Mm -hmm. Let's have one peace. This has been going on for many years. Mm -hmm. Didn't just start now, and I'm not going to hold brief for this government, by the way. Right. I'm not going to hold brief. There's exactly. insecurity. People are keep being killed. Exactly. It's frightening. Very frightening. I'm not happy. People are exactly. sad. Mm -hmm. Kidnappings are going on. I can't even travel anymore like I used to travel. Right. I'm scared. I don't want people to kidnap me. Yeah. I'll help However, in, in the midst of all that, we should still be thinking solution, mm -hmm. thinking peace, thinking like you said, Morayo, we only have this nation. Mm -hmm. We don't want war and anarchy. Right. And if we break into war, anarchy, guess what? Many people will leave the country. Lots of women, children will die, be raped, and they will be the victims. We should Absolutely. think of that. Right. And not just think, hey, for myself, you know. Just exactly. Okay, so um, for me, yeah. I, I, I wish the body of Christ can speak with one voice. Mm. You see, if we still have splinters or mm. different messages coming out of the body, body how do we expect Nigeria to speak with one voice? Uh, as it is, we, we have so much influence as men of God. Yeah. The, 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 the churches, people gather in throngs. Millions of people go every Sunday to listen to one man. Mm -hmm. And if only we can decimate the right messages through the churches that would preach 
that would, that would foster peace, we would have relatively um, a better society. So with the platform we have right now, you're, not, you're, you're transcending your church, you're transcending your pulpit, yeah. you have your view. Yeah. What would be the core message you believe the, 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 this season should symbolize to people? And how would you want us to respond to one another in this season? Forgiveness, love. Peace. These are the three things Jesus came to preach. Listen, I totally share your views and your sentiments. I'm as concerned as most Nigerians on the street that we're not speaking with one voice. It's painful to me as well. And we need to get to the point where we say, what would Jesus do? WWJD. That was what we used to preach back in the school. <laughs> what would Jesus do if Christ were to be alive today and walk in the streets of Nigeria? He would preach peace. It will preach love and it will preach forgiveness okay, yeah. and tolerance. It would never preach, oh, pull out your sword. Even when they wanted to come and arrest him, my dear Peter pulled out his sword and said, no, come on, keep that there, keep mm. that there. She don't mean shift it. You don't have to use it right now. There's a time to use it, but not now. You All know? right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue some conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. staying with us we still have with us um pastor kasali telling us about the, the message of easter sorry before the break you talked about um forgiveness yeah. love and peace and i and, and that, those are great um, um uh, things to think about but in a situation where there's a mistrust of each other you know we don't we don't we don't have confidence in each other and there's a distrust of the government we don't believe that the government has our best interest at heart how do i have peace with people who i just feel like they hate me. We don't. We don't trust each other. There's that. There's that. that there's that inherent dislike <laughs> for certain tribes over others. How do we begin to heal from what how, where we are today to get to retrace our steps so that we can all live together in unity? That's where you need moral leaders and patriots. Mm. All great nations in the world have been built by patriots, not politicians. Mm. We don't have patriots in this country, mm. and that's the truth. There's a difference between politicians and patriots. Moral leaders and just commercial leaders, or whatever you want to call them. Mm. Moral leaders. Mandela was a moral leader. Gandhi was a moral leader. These guys think of good and evil. No matter who does it, they tell you this is evil. Mm. If it's my tribesman, if it's my town, my village, they say this is wrong and must not be done. They'll condemn it. Mm. And we should condemn what your bad guys do as a bad man. I will condemn evil man should condemn what an evil man does as an evil person. I will say I should condemn what another man does as a that's what moral leadership is all about. Mm. Nigeria, we don't have moral leaders and we don't have patriots, unfortunately for us. Mm. That's why we're in this mess. And I've been praying for the past 10 years, God raise patriots for this country. Mm. We don't have people that like this country. They want the thing to just go anyhow because of corruption. They want to make money. Corruption has killed us. It's all about making money. We need patriots and we need moral leaders yes. for us to raise a great nation. Yes, go ahead, uh, I like to think, uh, when we discuss things, I, would like, I like to cast our minds yeah. behind and find what may have caused it. What yeah. is the history? And many times you hear people discuss, oh, this was not how it was in the yeah. 70s, in the yeah. 60s. But we have a history that some people will say had always been regionalized. People had, our country had always been based on the north, south, and east and you know the different regions and that it's really in present day that we're trying to unite what do you think we did wrong then from the beginning and what do we need to do specifically maybe in schools in our churches in our mosques amongst ourselves when we speak to each other what are the things that we need to do say project mm. to help us get you know the, the, the history of this country is very clear to all of us when we started after independence we had regions not religion then our law was a Christian. The problem that we have now started when we brought religion into the politics. Abiola won an election, Muslim, Muslim ticket. It can't happen anymore. Yeah. It can't. All across the north, they voted for him. He, was, he didn't care about religion. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, Jack Conde was a Muslim when our law was a regional leader. 
He gave, it was his governor's wife, almost everybody thought of religion. I grew up in a Muslim home. I was a Muslim. My dad, my mom allowed me when I became Christian, converted. As I have 16 children. Mm. We still have family meetings, Muslim Christians, we come together, we eat together. Mm. Today, it's almost like any meeting. One of my sisters almost hates me now because she's a very strong, strong Muslim. See, I don't want you to bother me. I hate you. And I said, okay, you too. I'll fight you. I'm a Christian. Why? Same father. Mm. Who did this to us? Mm -hmm. Who did this to us? Religious leaders have killed this country. I'm one of them. Mm. We've killed and ruined this country. We have to be truthful to ourselves. Mm. But when we had religion, region was simply for economic purposes. So you people develop economy in South, uh, Southern region, Northern region. We put some in the center to run our defense. Then things were fantastic until that city school. Things were going on well, it was better. Even the 79 elections, when Shagari came in, he was more of North. You will notice that religion played a very a little role. I'm telling you, now religion mm. is at the front burner. Right. Even everything. everything. And it's bad. And we need to start looking at that eyeball to eyeball and say, this is wrong. Right. So I would like to take this tweet before I base my question. So yeah. um, Agba first son is saying, my people and properties worth millions have been massacred, destroyed by militias every day at Ukute, Benue State, Nigeria, by their neighboring community, Bonta, in Benue State, Nigeria. And the crisis have loomed for over eight months. We hear people calling for secession. And I'm always wondering, if we secede and we have regions, and then we call them uh, Odudua Nation, we call it Arewa and all of that. Would we further divide? Because this is a border community within one state. And the, the division is clear. They are at war, and even the governor of the state seems un unable to think of solutions. The, the solutions just, you know, just fly off their head. They leave it as an ethnic crisis, and it continues to divide. Are we in secession the way forward I don't, I don't for agree. us? I don't agree. The greatest nations in the world today, U.S. and, and, and China, Find out who are the people that made us. All kinds of people went to the U.S. China had multiple tribes, and they came together under the Qing dynasty. Look at USSR that broke away to 15, 16 countries. Where is Latvia? Where, there are many countries we can't even mention. Mm. We can't even mention them. Economically, they're not doing well when they broke away from USSR. They strengthened numbers. And they just broke away Ukraine, Latvia, Czech, all kinds. I don't even remember that 15, 16 countries broke away from. But Russia is still strong. Russia is still strong. I don't agree with that. I think those that do that are the political elites for their own pockets. Yeah. They want to have money. That's all. They, they, listen, the country as it is now mm -hmm. are governed by governors. How many of us are demanding accountability for our governors? There are billions of naira every month. Mm. Some just take it like that and put it in their own pockets. Yeah. And you want to secede? Ah, uh, let's ask ourselves. But what those of questions. regional autonomy? So people are saying Fiscal. I don't want to secede. Yes. People Fiscal. are saying regional strength. Yeah. Do you I, I agree? agree? I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that. I think regional. we should go regional autonomy. We should decentralize the police. We should have um, fiscal economy. Mm -hmm. People know no autonomy. People now understand that. Mm -hmm. So whatever you generate here, you keep a larger percentage of it. You put some to the central to right. keep the defense of the nation, right. to protect the unity of right. the people, and to ensure that we all have safety and of yeah. lives and properties. Yeah. However, then. Then, then, most likely then, we have some transparency, some accountability at the regional level, then we can use those funds to so develop a Benue a state governor who, is, who seems to be yes. bereft of ideas, yes. once he's within that yes. region, yes. they can actually have better solutions because Absolutely. now he has more power to, 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 to solve the problem. If foster competition, healthy yes. competition, but yes. you will see that that region is growing with rails, with roads, with schools, ours is not. So the people here will vote their leaders out to get somebody in that can develop yeah. their region, just like that other region is developing. Fantastic. That will be helpful. Go ahead. Current mindset of Nigerians where politicians are accused I think of, it works. Okay, what I mean is that uh, many people have, you know, I had this conversation over the weekend with a young man and he was saying that many of the policies that we're bringing into Nigeria is, it will fall flat on his face because we have a mindset. People believe you get into office and you must be corrupt. So if you even regionalize whatever solutions there are, you will regionalize the corruption. So what do we need to do at that level concerning mindset? What are we teaching our children? Or what have we been taught that we should not teach our children so when it's their turn, they don't make the mistakes that we're making now? Corruption is key. You're very correct, I mean, you're very right. Um, even as it is right now, we have federal units, federation unit, federation units, 36, and nobody's demanding um, some things from the governors who are very corrupt, by the way, very corrupt, and they steal all the money, and, and I say that without any apologies and with a sense of honesty. And, and we keep quiet. We go to the federal and say, oh, this boy that's creating crisis somewhere in Udo, somewhere everywhere. I think corruption we must deal with. To deal with corruption, 
moral leaders. The, law, the houses of assemblies, the, you know, the watered down oversight functions of these lawmakers that, you know, any corrupt governor can be impeached, but we've not seen that in recent history in Nigeria. Yeah, so, but bringing me back to the power of religion, and we know that, sadly, religion has been used to divide us. Absolutely. But religion, every religion preaches peace. Mm. Every religion preaches yes. um, unity. Mm. Every religion preaches sacrifice. If you talk to the Muslim, they'll tell you we're supposed to sacrifice, you're supposed to give sadaqah, you're supposed to give sacrificially, helping your community. The Christians would also say sacrificial giving. So where, where is the lacuna? Why are we all religious? And then they are able to effectively use religions to divide us, but the religion cannot build us. Mm -hmm. How can we go back to using religion to do what it's meant to do, which mm -hmm. is pro lift us, provide unity, and build us, promote the peace? I'm sorry I'm not able to give some answers to that one. <laughs> because we are the problem. I've always said that. That religious I said it, I've tweeted it I've, for the past five, eight years. Religious leaders are the problem in this country. Mm -hmm. We are the problem. Is that our culture? Is our, is our culture inflating? Um, in well, I, I guess you're right. I preach a sermon called KBSC. Mm. KBSC means KBOC. Nobody can question you. Mm. And I said, somehow we divide our religious leaders to the point where we can't question them. Mm. We don't want to question one. They said, touch mm. not my anointed. So whatever the person does and says is right. Mm. So I think you're right. Our culture has also played some role for us to just pay obeisance to those ahead of us, be it politicians or be it religious leaders. We don't want to question them. And only God should not be questioned, not men of God. Mm. Hmm. You know, I, I wanted to ask something controversial. I'm trying to rephrase it in a way that is not too... Because sometimes I feel like democracy is not working here. I feel like, do we really need democracy? I mean, I, I, I recently at the mm. Ashura Jews of Colloquium, there was a professor from Harvard who was saying that, that based on the data, yeah, he's reiterating that democracy is still the way because other African countries have actually been able to use democracy to stabilize their country in, in different ways. And I'm thinking... Do we, are we too big a nation such that we need to look back and say, okay, maybe we should find ways to empower the, the, the monarchs. Maybe we should find a way to, not, I'm, I don't want to go back to the restructuring issue, but maybe is democracy really is a solution. Can we really all say government by the people for the people? Or should we say, you know, maybe we need some kind of autocracy. With the, maybe, maybe because we, we, many people sub, sub, subject themselves to the leadership of the pastors, leadership of the imams, leadership of the monarchs. Maybe in this country, what we need is that monarchy type of system where we have this rule. I don't know, I'm just thinking out of it because sometimes it's, it's as if we are bereft of ideas or we, the, the, the democracy is not really functioning the I way it should. democracy is still the way forward. We'll, we'll just have to tweak it a little bit. There's autocratic democracy. There's parliamentary democracy, there's presidential. We have tweaked us too much along presidential, the American style, and it's not working for us. Because it depends on the people. Look at, we keep speaking about Rwanda. Rwanda is a beacon. It's autocratic democracy. It's been up over 20 years. We couldn't even give a, a person your third term. We, we ran. Yeah. You can't run it in for four years. The first year you're getting into power. You want to get money to, all the money you spent to get to the office to recoup. Second year, let me not start thinking of doing roads. Third year, they tell you, ah, next year is election. So you start stealing again. Fourth year, you go into election. So how can you develop a nation in four years? Before you know it, second time is in. From the first year of the second time, you're thinking, for who? Let me look at my successor. That will cover my yes. mess. Second year, you're saying, look, let me change my cabinet. Third year, I want to go to the Senate. Fourth year, you are just, so there's no way in eight years any. I want to go to the Senate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, I'll go to the Senate. So fourth year, you're yeah, out, second time. Now I say, what, what do I do after that? Let me get an ambassadorial post. Look at our favorite governor in Kogi State. Just get the second time. Only the thinking 2023. How can you imagine? Becoming the president. Yes, yeah. so it tells yeah. you a lot about the kind of democracy we should do. We should mm. tweak ours a bit. What we're practicing now is not working. Not working. It's extremely expensive. Mm. The National Assembly is the most expensive it's assembly expensive. in the world. Mm. It's not working. Oh, and we should look at it honestly. I say, you know what? Let's go a bit autocratic. Let's give the person their six years, two times, but they will not allow. So for where? We, we need what to go around. Region, yeah. Yeah, mm. Go around. Rotational democracy. But I think we should consider working. Germany. It's not working. Because you see, uh, um, yeah. Angela Merkel is living and she's been there for many years. Oh, yeah. And it's not autocratic. <laughs> it's just a system that allows you to stay longer term. Uh, but, but honestly, I, I always try to find a way to bring it back into... Um, Easter is the visit. Easter is why we are here. We're all dressed up. We're, all, we're, we're trying to be happy. Before you switch you? to happiness, yeah, let me I say, yeah, 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 I have, I have, 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 have something to Because we, we, like, we like this kind of conversation in Nigeria. Let us continue to revel in our. Um, Hassan, are you there? He's been hoping for a while. Yes, I'm there. You're live. Go ahead, please.
Hello. Hello. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, Hassan. Good morning. Happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter. Okay. Let's talk about Limo Show. Not, oh, yes. not a regular Hassan. Regular. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're live. We can hear you. You're, you're all looking gorgeous and beautiful. Thank you, sir. Hassan. God bless you. Pastor, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Happy Easter, sir. Happy Easter to you as well. Th thank you for the word of wisdom and the knowledge you have been sharing to us this morning. May the Lord continue to embrace you with more wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Yeah, okay this one yes. So, okay, I just <laughs> would like to go back to what our leaders, our religious leaders, yes. should say and how they should say it. Yeah. So, in many communities, the government that the people see are their religious leaders. Yeah. And um, when we started this conversation, you said something about um, religious leaders taking themselves out of politics. Yeah. And uh, whether we like it or not, religious leaders are part of the country, part of the politics, part of what is happening. Yeah. How does a religious leader lead his people? Yeah. Being the, the the face of leadership and politics within his community, what does he say? How does he say it to his people to make them aware, to teach them ab about religion and as well about what their rights are, what they should seek for politically, without being called out and uh, accused of causing problems? Right. You get what I'm well, I, I get what you mean. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should be truthful, that, because again, religion is about being truthful. And justice, what is more about justice? You cannot, I mean, truth without justice. But we should not be involved in partisan politics. Mm. We should not be involved in governance, as it were. I swear the key leaders have teeming followers. What we are doing right now is we've been actively involved, mm. actively, please know that word, involved in partisan politics, mm. meaning I'm PDP, I'm APC. Okay. And that's, what, and that's, that's dangerous. Yeah. That's dangerous. That's not right. You know, and we get to the point that we don't know where to draw the line anymore. So no matter what this guy does, because I'm in the party with him, I benefited from whatever she's done. I would just turn the blind high. Mm. That's I feel during the previous regime, so many things were happening. They turned the blind high. Mm. They didn't speak. How come all of a sudden they have a voice now? Because I don't like that particular person. I don't like his party. Yeah. So I now begin to speak and use the pulpit mm. to say things. So I, I honestly believe that we're using the pulpit wrongly as the campaign podium, which mm. is wrong to campaign for mm. a particular party and to push a particular agenda. Mm. I think we should just stay, read the Bible, mm. preach the Bible, and do what the Bible says you should like do. Save you. souls. That's all. I'd like all. to stay with you on that point, but I have to take this call. Uh, yeah. Good morning. John, are you there? John. Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Morning. Uh, good morning. Happy start to everyone on Thank the studio. Uh, my, my name is John. I'm calling from UK. Yes. Uh, quick one. In you know, to your previous conversation about the security, one thing I discovered that we do a lot in this land, I mean, in Nigeria, is that we talk a lot without action. And I'm looking forward into a day where our leaders will begin to put action and talk less. You know, because the issue of security, they've been talking about it for, you know, 10 years without any good result coming out you know, different meetings and all those things like that. And also, to our pastor, in, uh, the reverend in the studio, I'm looking forward to um, a day where our religious leader will begin to, to, to come, I mean, to, to put, um, what's it called? I mean, kind of, uh, um, uh, what other put it? You know, uh, put effort into the community, you know, kind of, uh, you know, do more to the community because there's no, there's no, there's no reason where we are so many churches in Nigeria and our community is so bad. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, John from the UK. I was going to come to talk because I know you want to take us into the Easter mode. But before we run there, I want you to talk. I had an interview with somebody recently who told me when I was questioning about Khan, and he said, "Morel, Khan is not born again. Khan is a decision is not a born again institution. That their own is to advocate for." the rights of Christians across the country. Do you think Khan has been somewhat irresponsible? I, don't, I, I know you I don't want to categorically say that, but in their or utterances, or controversial, mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. utterances, mm -hmm. have, they, have they been within their scope? Or they, are they one of those who have veered off into politics? I mean, mm -hmm. should, we bring them, should we bring it back home? It's because what is their role exactly in all this? You see, 
Um, I, I would answer that with a bit of what she had asked earlier. The church and CAN are two different things. CAN is an organization of all Christians and churches, churches, I beg your pardon, together and speak for the, to defend the Christian faith in the land, to observe laws that will be anti-Christian in nature and attack it. I think Ken, under this um, leadership, has done fairly well. Okay. My opinion, and I'll be honest with you, I think I've spoken to Reverend Shoko, he listens. He would like to hear from your hand before you make a view on the subject matter. A few times, they, they may have been misadvised, you know, you know, because of the social media information out there. Mm. So they, they won't go ahead and to find out what's really going on. Mm. But I think they've done fairly well. I'm going to be honest with you. Khan has done fairly well with respect to their work. However, is the religious leaders that's a problem? Because again, especially my own, my own constituency, the Pentecostals. Pentecostals. Because we have, we, we are gods on our own. We do not have authority. We don't submit to authority. Yeah. We use the pulpit anyhow, mm. and we we. The church should say something that the government is trying to do homosexual agenda. That's against what the Bible says. So you should go on the pulpit and you speak against that. If the Bible government decides to do something that you know is against scriptures, you can go and do that. But to start looking at policies of government and you attack every time or you try to condemn and criticize one, it's a bit partisan for me. And I think okay. it's not what God has called us all to do. That's yeah, my that's like you it for your run of <clears throat> That causes almost all our, uh, our so-called clergy, traditional leaders and politicians are blinded by ethno-religious bigotry, while our youth are enveloped in drug addiction, mm. prostitution, and criminal gangsterism, only to, only to raise to become heartless leaders themselves. The Kismafe says, all leaders, religious or political, must practice the teachings of what they identify with. Being a religious leader is just a status if you do not have the love of God to do right by the people. Professor Enakena says, the national security architecture must now be primed in a way to allow state access to recruit and manage their local security. The egregious political sponsorship of criminality must be abhorred, and those involved must be prosecuted openly as a deterrent. Right. So I love this great tweet. Yeah. So, so, um, um, Andrew Shidham <laughs> says that Christian and Islam in Nigeria preaches peace, sacrifice, and love. Even we have 1,000 churches slash, slash mosques per square meter, per square mile, yet society is not working in Nigeria. Uh, Nathan says, nothing wrong with democracy itself. Problem is the perversion by operators. Fundamental to any democracy are the principles of federalism, equity, fairness, and justice. Right. This is what our operators pervert, making us question the validity of democracy. You know, just before we started the show, <laughs> we were making fun. Yeah. And because of social media, it seems like Easter is about Easter bunny eggs, <laughs> chocolate eggs, and not Christ anymore. Like we're losing perspective of what Easter is. And you know, sometimes, like now for us, it will seem funny because many of us know what it's about. But over time, okay. uh, children are looking at it and they're wondering, Where the Easter, where's the Easter bunny? Where's the egg? Like, could you say something to remind us? you know, that what, what Easter definitely is about, and the Easter bunny, and that's just um, Hollywood and not reality. <laughs> I guess, I guess um, we all know, as I speak right now, we're running a social media campaign at church. Hundreds of people are there pushing, I love the cross. Hashtag, ah. I love the cross. So you're going to train a couple of hours from now. It's about the cross. The cross actually defines our faith. Um, I mean, thank God for Christmas, but thank God the more for Easter. Without Easter, there'll be no Christian faith. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's not because of Christmas or miracles. It's because he died on that cross for the sins of humanity. And that's why many Christians use the emblem of the cross as the logo, as it were. Regardless of what church, be it Seller, be it Pentecostal, be it Anglican, be it Catholic, there's something we all have in our churches, the cross. And that speaks about our unite, unifying emblem and logo. The cross. I think we should replace all these bunnies with the cross. That will be my message. Yes. <laughs> We're going to be taking a few calls now from the yeah. YouTube. There's a, a tweet said something about we have churches. I, mean, I know my own personal church, RCCG, <laughs> was part of our, in the early days, our, one, of, one of our vision was to have a church every five minutes yeah. from each other. So that mm -hmm. was the vision then. But now, churches are now every two minutes and they are everywhere. And still, we still have the fact that our society is not yet uh, morally yes. upright. So, do you think the vision of consistently building buildings, having that every five, five minutes, is still the way to go? Or should, there, should we change strategy on how we get people? I'll, I'll let you answer that question after this call from the US. Good morning. Are you there? 
Good morning. Thanks for calling. You're live. Go ahead, please. Um, uh, um, I want to contribute to I want to tell me, uh, Nima, sorry for what happened to her on Monday or Tuesday. She had an encounter with the uh, police people, so I want to tell her, I want to tell her sorry. Okay, Nima, she has heard sorry. Um, what, for what happened, uh, I want to tell her sorry for what happened to her on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, thank you, sir. Nima, thank welcome. Thank you, sir. How are you? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to go to the Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Joshua. We appreciate it. I didn't get that last part. All right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what do you think? To be honest with you, Morayo, I, and to be honest, I like to be honest, we have failed. It's like you have in many schools, and illiteracy level is the high. Mm -hmm. Because the purpose of school mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. to drop illiteracy level. I have in hospitals everywhere, and people are still dying of malaria. The, the hospitals are not working. We have churches, and immorality is on the rise, mm. corruption on the rise, crime. bandit to crime. I mean, clubs, sin, iniquity. What we're meant to treat and attack is still on the rise. Mm. That means we have failed. Maybe, maybe it's not the fault or the problem is not planting churches, but not raising pastors. Because if you have too many hospitals and quack doctors, mm. you keep killing people. Too many schools and ill-trained teachers mm. don't be able to spell. You get the point now. Mm. So maybe the church idea of moving everywhere isn't that bad, but we refuse to train those that will operate those churches. Mm. Pastors, they are not theologically sound. We have all kind of criminals behind the pulpit. We just have everything being done anyhow. And so we now have, that's why the salt and the light thing is not working. Mm. Morals are still very low. It's going down faster. You keep wondering. And the people that do all that go to church. Mm -hmm. So there's something wrong with what we mm -hmm. preach in church. Mm -hmm. exactly. What we preach should be morals, love, justice, tolerance. That means what we're peace. preaching could be. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we're preaching is wrong. Cause, and that's why I think we are failed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong in planting churches. There's something wrong in not building people. How do we people. retrace our steps, sir? How do we begin church to leaders, retrace? Church we have to, first, we have to acknowledge that we're wrong. Okay. Just like the thief on the cross. One said, I'm wrong. I'm here justifiably. And Christ said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. The other said, well, I keep playing the blame game. It's your fault. It's government's fault. It's this. Well, that person went away. So we need to first say to ourselves, you know what, guys? We're wrong. We have, we have not gotten to that point. Okay. As, as, I did, as I did now, we're still debating and arguing it. Mm. We need to agree first. Call ourselves in a communication meeting and say, hey, guys, shut the door. We're wrong. We made a mistake. Then what we will now do? From there, we'll have to say, let's start training pastors. That's all. Train pastors and you have good members. Ill-trained pastors who have terrible members, sleeping with their members, oh, stealing their them. money, doing all kinds ah. of things, teaching wrong doctrines. Mm. We need to place premium on training men of God, right. pastors that will man those churches, not businessmen. They brought so many secular ideas into running churches. There's two different things. Church is not a business. Stop all this making mm. church about money, money, money. It's not about business. It's about helping people to become better That's in okay. life. So there's this thing I have to talk about. Yeah. Our young ones, yes. our youths, there are these two ills, drugs and scamming. Mm. So I was in church one day, yeah. and my church, I think like 80% of the congregation is young people. Yeah. And I'm wondering, okay, I'm sure yeah. of these 80 people, they have to be involved in one way with the drugs, with the scamming, but they're in church and they fill the pews and they're dancing and they're singing and they're raising hands to God. What are we not telling them? What are we We're saying not, wrong? Not saying what are we, what are we not saying? Because I remember that part, the reason why I even brought it, I remember the day pastor, the pastor said something about, if you know you are into this, I'm saying it now. So the Holy Spirit is going ahead of you. You better stop it because, but I'm wondering, how do you have so many young people in churches these days and yet you have that many doing these things that we're doing? Oh. It's the message we preach. We preach money, we preach prosperity, we preach tithing. And we ignore where the tithe, money, and prosperity is coming from. We ignore the source. We ignore the resource. Materialism. We like the resource and we ignore the source. And the source matters more than the resource. We just want all kinds. So because we have done, not done that right, what we're now doing, and here's that message, is about love, <coughs> forgiveness, redemption, and the things Christ said on the cross. Seven messages. We must go back today. You build me in paradise. Relationship. John, behold your mother. 
mother, behold your son. In other words, two people that are not related okay. can have a spiritual relationship mm. and they can bond That's together. Awesome. I can call you my sister, you can call me your brother. Mm. That's what Christ came to preach and teach. We have to run. So tell me once more what <coughs> you do, what your church is. I think you said hashtag love. I love the Okay, cross. we're doing a social media campaign. Hashtag social I love media. the cross. I love the cross. Just want people to just go ahead and we have some different banner and, and yeah. banner saying I love the cross. Okay. That's all. Okay. We want to identify with the cross today. Oh, let people know about the cross and let us push the cross message out there. Not the church message, the cross oh, message. Oh, fantastic. I think we can wrap up on that. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> it's always a pleasure having you. Thank yes, you. for being very objective, Thank being you. true. And that's what we need people to do at this point, to speak truth to power and let us let, let, let Nigerians understand the real issues. And let's not listen to the politicians. We need patriots. Yes. Mm. If I've not gotten anything from this interview, mm -hmm. it's the fact that we have politicians leading. We need patriots mm -hmm. and leaders to lead this country. Yeah. They, can, they can look at it irrespective of your of religion, yeah. culture, and whatever. And all, yeah. and all Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, that's all we can take on the show. Have a fabulous Easter. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.